Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we're going to discuss about the living world part 2. We'll be discussing about biodiversity and the reason for giving scientific names to organisms. There's a huge variety of organisms that is found on the earth. This huge variety of organisms is referred to as biodiversity. Now there are so many organisms and all these organisms are known by local names. Let's take the example of cat. The animal is known as cat in English. It's known as Billy in Hindi. It's known as Bilay in Odia. Billadi in Gujarati. Okay. Manjar in Marathi. And Pilli in Telugu. So there are various names that is given to the cat. But if you have to study about the cat on a global scale, there is a need to give it a specific name by which it is known all over the world. There is a need to provide it with a standard name by which the animal is going to be known all over the world. Because these local names, multiple number of local names will create confusion. And the process of giving a standard name to an organism is known as nomenclature. Now before naming an organism, you need to know the characteristics of the organism. You need to describe the organism and that is known as identification. For example, if you brought a pet to your home, okay, and you need to name it. So you're going to find out certain characters and on the basis of those characters, you're going to name the pet. So that process of finding out the characters is identification. These scientific names are given to the organisms on the basis of a code. Plants are given scientific names on the basis of International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. And animals are given a scientific name on the basis of International Code of Geological Nomenclature. You can see there are some scientific names of organisms given at the bottom of the slide. Like humans are known as Homo sapiens. Cat is known as Felis domesticus. A lion is known as Panthera leo. Tiger is known as Panthera tigris. And cobra is known as Naga Naga. Now the question arises, what is the need for nomenclature? There are millions of organisms that are found in the world. And all these organisms are known by different vernacular names. They are known by different local names in different parts of the world. Therefore, there is a need to standardize the naming. There is a need to provide a specific or a standard name to these organisms so that they can be studied easily. And it also prevents confusion. The scientists have provided the name on the basis of a system. The system is called binomial system of nomenclature. Binomial system of nomenclature is a system of providing a name with two components. The first component is the genus name and the second component is the species name. This system of naming was given by Carolus Linnaeus. There are certain rules that need to be followed while writing a scientific name. First of all, the scientific name must always be written in Latin language. Latin is considered as a dead language because it is no longer in use. If a language is still in use, 
then there will be modifications every now and then that cannot be afford, afforded for scientific names. Whenever a scientific name is written, the first component is the genus name which starts with a capital letter and the second component is a species name which starts with a small letter. Whenever scientific names are written, the two components should be underlined separately. And when they are printed, they must be italicized. You can see a scientific name that is written at the end, that is Homo sapiens. So whenever it is printed, it must be italicized. And the first letter should be capital, that is the first letter of the genus name should be capital and the first letter of the species name should be small and they should be written separately. Suppose you have a stack of books and you are asked to arrange the books on the bookshelf. So what are you going to do? You're going to arrange the books on the basis of some characters. You're going to put them in different sh shelves on the basis of some characters. Now what will happen if you just place them all randomly? If you want a maths book, you have to keep on searching the entire shelf. But if you arrange the books on the basis of some characters, if you arrange them on the basis of subjects, like if you keep maths book on the top then science and social science and english or literature books at the bottom you're going to find them easily okay now think about a house a house is having different rooms like a study room a living room a dining room a bedroom kitchen washroom and so on now there are a few things that are scattered at the bottom of the slide you can see the pictures if you just scatter them and keep them anywhere randomly when you want something it will be very difficult to find for it you have to look around the entire house for it but if you arrange them categorically or if you arrange them on the basis of some characters then it would be very easily found. For example, you need to keep a pillow in the bedroom. So when you think of a pillow, you will go to the bedroom and search for the pillow. You're not going to search the entire house for the pillow. Okay. If you want a pencil, you will go to the study room. If you want your bag, you'll go to the study room. If you want books, you'll go to your study room. If you want a knife, you'll go to the kitchen. So it becomes much easier if you classify things okay so what is classification it is a process of grouping things into categories based on some characters so that is known as classification and every organism are having a lot of characters which makes them different from another organism. Now, what are the reasons for classifying organisms? First, it makes the study of the organisms easier. Since there are a lot of organisms, so they are categorized into groups and you don't study about the organisms in detail. You study about the group, so it becomes easier in that way. And it also helps you to understand the evolution of the organisms, how the organisms have evolved with time. And scientific naming is also based on the classification. The scientific naming is also based on classification. If there's no classification, scientific naming becomes very difficult. The organisms are arranged into different categories on the basis of some easily observable characters. 
each category is known as a taxa. Okay, all the living organisms are grouped into different categories on the basis of some characters which can be easily observed. So this process of arranging the organisms into various categories is called taxonomy. The process of arranging the organisms into various taxa is known as taxonomy. So the word taxonomy has come from the word taxa. And there are four processes that are basic to taxonomy. So taxonomy includes these four processes, that is characterization, identification, classification, and nomenclature. Characterization means when you see an organism, you find out some characters which are easily observed. So that is characterization. The next process is identification. You identify an organism. You can know the organism if you see it anywhere. You, you mark some identification features. So that is identifying the organism. The third process is classification. Then you classify the organism into different groups on the basis of the characters that you observed. And then you give it a name that is nomenclature. There's a branch of study that deals with the evolutionary relationships between the organisms and that branch of study is known as systematics. Evolutionary relationship means there is some relationship between two organisms. How one organism has evolved from the other organism. So there's a branch of study that deals with this relationship. How an organism has been evolved from another organism. What is the relationship between them? So that evolutionary relationship is dealt in systematics. Now the term systematics has come from the word systema, which means the systematic arrangement of organisms. And Linnaeus has given this word. Okay. He also made the title of his publication as Systema Natura. Thank you for watching. If you understood the topic, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And let me know if you have any doubts in the comment section below.